Hello everyone, welcome to Daddy Image Service for Container Clusters. This is a working system deployed at scale in Alibaba. I am Hui Bali. Containers are becoming the foundation of cloud platform, especially for cloud native applications. But deploying containers involves a lot of time, sometimes the long tail latency reaches tens of minutes. Daddy Image Service is trying to solve this very problem. The essential reasons are image downloading and unpacking. They are both slow, but the point is only 6.4% of the image is actually used, according to a recent research. To some extent, it is a regression to a decade ago when the virtual machine images were also downloaded to the hosts. P2P downloading is widely used in large container clusters. It significantly improves downloading speed in these environments, but the result is still far from satisfactory, as it deals with only half the reason. The actions of downloading and unpacking are still there. Furthermore, P2P downloading has little effect for small clusters. Slimming the images is another attempt to improve the deployment latency, but this approach is not universal because it's hard to automatically find all dependencies for all applications, and it's also hard to support ad hoc operations within the containers. And we believe the ideal approach is a remote image that avoids the beforehand downloading and unpacking. This model has been proven by virtual machine clusters in cloud platforms, where remote images are extensively used today. There are many works trying to introduce remote image to containers, such as CRFS supported by Google, Teleport supported by Microsoft, VMFS from Sir. There are also many works come from research institutes, such as Slacker, Wolf, CFS, CIDR, etc. But the fact is, the image format, TABO, is not viable for remote image, as it is not seekable. The format was designed for entirely unpacking. It's also hard to support advanced features such as extended attribute, cross-layer reference, etc. So it is a must to change the format. Most existing works avoid the format problem by providing unpacked images via NFS, CIFS, or fused-based file systems. So they have a necessary step to import the tarball images. It's not possible to code start containers directly from registry with these works. CRFS is trying to enhance the current image format by adding a special index file. The resulting image, called StarGZ, is still a valid tabor, and it can be correctly processed by other container engines that do not support CRFS. On the other hand, we believe it's better not confined in tabor, and we should design a new image format based on block device, because it brings benefits and lowers down complexity at the same time. There are two types of images. One is file system based, and the other is block device based. Choosing a proper type of image is quite important, because it influences a lot of things. A file system based remote image provides a file system interface directly to containers. It is a natural extension of container image, so it incurs less mental friction. A block device-based remote image, on the other hand, needs to work together with a regular file system, such as ext4, and the block device can be easily integrated with container, secure container, and virtual machines. A file system-based remote image is more complex, as the file system interface involves many operations that have complex semantics. So it is more difficult to get stable, more difficult to apply optimizations, 
and more difficult to develop advanced features, such as extended attribute or cross-layer reference. A block device-based remote image, on the other hand, is much simpler, so it, it is easier to get stable, easier to apply optimizations, and easier to develop advanced features. A block, a block image is more universal because it allows the application to choose the best fit file system. For example, a Windows container running on Linux host may want to choose NTFS as its image file system. It is most likely feasible with block image. A block image has smaller attack surface so it is easier to get secured than the counterpart. According to this analysis, we have been study on block, block device. Although we are working almost alone, we believe this is the best approach for container system. Before introducing the details of Daddy, let's take a look at the background. Container images are downloaded to hosts and unpacked there. The images are constituted by multiple layers. Each layer is a change set compared to the previous state, namely files added, modified, and deleted. The layers are read-only and shared by multiple container instances. Each container instance has a private container layer that is writable. It is a change set compared to the image. Usually, the layers are stored in separate directories, and the merged view is created with a kernel module overlay FS. This is the IO path of the image. The containerized application sends IO requests to overlay FS, which then redirects the requests to an appropriate layer. There are three core components in Daddy. The first is the novel layered image format based on virtual block device. Each layer in Daddy is a change set of overwritten data blocks, and we create a merged view of the layers with a new module called Overlay Block Device, or Overlay BD for short. It is a general solution for container ecology. Daddy image retains compression by introducing a module called ZFA, which supports seekable online decompression. This is the second core component, and the third one is a tree-structured P2P subsystem, providing on-demand transfer to cope with our large-scale production clusters. The data path of Daddy goes as follows. The application in container reads from a regular file system, like ext4. The request is then transformed into reads of a virtual block device. Then they get passed to a user space service daemon. Then get transformed by overlay BD to reads of one or more layer blobs. And the reads usually need decompression by Z files. For layers that do not exist locally, Z file reads data with the help of the P2P subsystem. Each layer in Daddy is a change set of overwritten data blocks. There is no concept of files or file system, and we have an index for faster reading. The index has a variable length of entries in order to save memory by combining adjacent entries. We believe memory footprint is important because containers are often used for high-density deployment. The index is an array of non-overlapping entries sorted by their logical offsets. When reading the image, we perform range queries directly over the index, instead of block-by-block -block queries. The indexes of multiple layers can be merged when loaded, so that a single query can handle any number of layers, and the performance doesn't degree as the number of layers increases. This is a key advantage over, over the FS. We analyzed our production images and found that the number of entries in merged index is less than 4,500, which consumes only about 72 kilobytes of memory. Redix tree is usually used in block images for indexing snapshots. 
We don't use Redix tree because it deals with fixed sized blocks only. So its memory footprint is larger. And it also incurs an overhead for copy and write. Btree is also frequently used for indexing. We tried the general implementation of Btree from Google, but found that it performed worse than binary search on an array. Actually, the array is a simplified Btree that has only one node, and we believe that a specialized multi-node Btree is probably better than the array, but we leave it as a future work. The left figure shows the raw performance of our index. A, a single CPU core can yield over 6 million QPS for our production image. The right figure shows a comparison with the LVM. We can see that Daddy performs worse than LVM until the LQ depth reaches 128. This indicates our index performance is higher than that of LVM. Despite our user space implementation, incurs a significant overhead. And it's worth noting that our compressed format performs better than non-compressed format, as long as the CPU is not a bottleneck. Daddy implements the writable layer with a lock structure design so that it is compatible with virtually all kinds of distributed file systems, including those append-only ones. We maintain a separate index for each writable layer with a red-black tree in order to realize efficient insertion and deletion. When building new layers, Daddy commits only useful data blocks to the read-only blob, eliminating all the garbages. At the same time, Daddy also sort the data blocks by their logical offsets so that adjacent uh, index entries can be combined together as a single one. Daddy's Z file is a seekable compression format that supports random reading. Z file achieves this with chunk by chunk compression and just enough decompression. A Z file can encode an arbitrary file and it is not tied to Daddy image format. We are also investigating dictionary support in Z file. It enables two pass encoding. In the first pass, the encoder scans the whole file and generate a summary called dictionary. The dictionary is then used for in the following pass for chunk by chunk encoding. It is also used in decoding. This scheme can improve compression ratio and possibly decompression performance. The red figure shows the statistics of layer size in our production environment. We can see that Daddy image is larger than its counterpart in TAR format. This is because Daddy has an overhead for the full featured file system. The overhead is relatively moderate when layer size is greater than 10 megabytes. We can also see that ZFL's compression ratio is less than that of GZIP because we use faster algorithms that are focused on speed, especially decompression speed, and they sacrifice some compression ratio. The chunk by chunk compression pattern we use also hurts the compression ratio because the algorithms need to restart again for every chunk. So the lowered compression ratio is a price paid for faster online decompression. The tree structured topology is maintained dynamically by root node for each layer blob separately. Every node catches recently accessed data blocks so that they, can, they have data to serve other nodes. When the node needs to read data, it simply sends a request to its parent node, and the request is likely to hit the parent's cache. In case of cache miss, the parent will forward the request upward recursively until it is fulfilled. Building images with study is faster because study generates sequential write that is more efficient, and study may also avoid pulling base images by on-demand read. This is especially true for dedicated image builders. Committing study images is also faster because Daddy uses faster 
compression algorithms. The image builder in container engine generates one separate layer for each command line in the script. This was an optimization to exploit parallelism when pulling the images, but it may become useless for remote images. Besides the optional P2P subsystem, Daddy can also cooperate with the shared storage, such as HDFS, Ceph, NFS, etc. With this scheme, users have the option to store layer blobs on the shared store, eliminating the need to download complete layer blobs on the host. Instead, they only need to maintain a small cache for hot data blocks so that they can serve other hosts in a peer-to-peer -peer transfer. For clusters that have little burst workloads, it's also possible for Daddy to work without the P2P subsystem, as shown in the right column of the table. It's worth noting that the bottom right case is actually a scheme of distributed block store that is commonly used today for virtual machine clusters. Finally, the evaluations. The left figure shows the results of a code startup of a single container. We can see that study is much faster than, the, than other approaches, no matter starting from registry or P2P root. In case of warm startup, as shown in the right figure, study is still faster, especially when disk performance is limited. The left figure shows the results of startup latency with trace-based prefetching. We can see that the prefetching dramatically increases the performance, and the result is getting very close to that of warm startup. The red figure shows the results of batch startup of multiple containers. Note that the startup latency with study is much lower and remains largely constant as the number of instances increases. We evaluate the startup latency with a specifically written application called Agility. It is a Python application that sends an HTTP request to a web server, which then records the timestamps when the requests arrive. The left figure shows the results of starting 10,000 containers on 1,000 hosts, including both cold and warm startups. The results indicate that Daddy is effective at starting up large container clusters. The right figure shows the projected results of starting a hyperscale container cluster by evaluating only a single branch of the P2P tree. The results indicate that Daddy is highly scalable. We evaluate I.O. performance with DU and TAR, comparing against Overlay 2 and LVM. The results show that Daddy performs better than both of them on both SSD and the cloud disk. Block-based images have a technical drawback, namely the page cache sharing problem, as the images are exposed to kernel as individual block, block devices, and the kernel doesn't know that some files are actually the same, so the kernel will allocate different cache buffers for them. The TGD images, on the other hand, can share a single cache buffer for the same file across different containers on the same host. Because the kernel module of Unix file systems can tell the kernel that the files are the same. The page cache sharing problem can be solved with kernel same page merging, but it incurs a significant overhead. So we want to make it shareable from the beginning. The key to this problem as to tell the kernel that two data blocks on two different block devices are actually the same one data block. And this information must be explored further by file system and the page cache. To realize this, we plan to refactor the L stack in order to support DAX along the whole path, and the unique data blocks are managed by the bottom layer of the stack. As container and virtual machine is converging, and uh, 
it's likely for them to form a converted runtime in the near future. So container is becoming a new virtual machine and vice versa. Given that data study image is easy to integrate with both of them, Daddy may place the role of a bridge to, continue, to connect the two worlds. The converted runtime, together with Daddy, will enable applications to, e to evolve gradually from cloud-based to cloud-native. Okay, thanks.